I'm Andrew Edwards, you're watching Gear Live, and it's iPhone 12 and 12 Pro launch week. Now I talked about the cameras in my iPhone 12 review, and if you missed that, I'll leave a link below. But one question I keep getting is this, how does the iPhone 12 Pro camera compare to the Google Pixel 5? So let's find out. This video is sponsored by Moment, the marketplace for creatives. Stay tuned to find out more. Okay, so I took both the iPhone 12 Pro and Google Pixel 5 out for a couple of days and evenings to grab some comparison shots to share with you guys. So I went around Seattle, Kirkland, and Woodenville, and all the images you see in this video were taken with one of these two phones, and I'll be sure to label them so you know which is which. Okay, let's start with some of the daytime images here while I give you a breakdown of each of these camera systems. I focused this video on the still photo experience for the average consumer. No edits have been made to any of the photos and every photo was either just pick up, point and shoot, or at most I tapped on the screen to focus on a subject and then shot the photo. Also, if I tap to focus on one device, then I did the same for the other to keep it even. Now, photography preferences are mostly a matter of opinion. So I'll just be showing you side by side what the photos look like and you can determine for yourself which ones you like better rather than me telling you which one you should like more, although I will point out some differences when they're obvious. Also, I do have a video coming shortly that's all about iPhone 12 Dolby Vision HDR video. It's being edited right now and it looks absolutely incredible. It should be ready in a day or two, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and bell icon in order to be notified when that one drops. Similar to last year, the iPhone 12 has a wide angle and an ultra wide angle camera, and the iPhone 12 Pro has the same and adds in a third telephoto lens as well. What's changed is that the wide angle is now a seven element lens, which makes images sharper with a faster f1.6 aperture, which brings in 27% more light. The Pixel 5 camera, on the other hand, is the same hardware that Google has used since the Pixel 3, with improvements being made exclusively on the software side of things, with the exception of the addition of a telephoto camera on the Pixel 4, which Google removed and replaced with an ultra-wide on the Pixel 5. Google says that the reason they keep using this older camera hardware for the main camera is because it works well for their computational photography algorithms. Still, the Pixel 5 photos are sharp and full of contrast. They handle light and shadows nicely, and the phone does a really, really good job in low light. If we were comparing the Pixel 5 to the iPhone 11, I would be able to tell you before you even took the photo where the iPhone would suffer in comparison to the Pixel and where the Pixel wouldn't perform as well when compared to the iPhone. This year, because Google hasn't made as huge a leap forward in photography, combined with Apple's forward progress on both the hardware side and computational photography side with newer smart HDR3, night mode, and deep fusion tech, those areas of weakness on the iPhone are gone and in some cases it's even surpassed the Pixel. Now I did say I'm not gonna tell you which photos to like more than others because everything is a matter of opinion, but I did wanna show you this photo of a statue of children running and holding hands. Now I snapped this in portrait mode and the iPhone not only kept the colors accurate while the Pixel took on a bluish blown out hue, but it was the Pixel that had several errors in processing the background, not the iPhone. Now neither phone got this 100% perfect, but the iPhone has one small area that I can point out while the Pixel has several areas where the background just wasn't separated from the foreground properly. Apple has improved the iPhone's ability to separate the subject from the background in a major way. I was constantly surprised because this is just so much better than it was on the iPhone 11 when it comes to portrait mode. Now, before we get to some of the night shots, I wanna take a minute to thank the sponsor of this video, Moment. Now, sure, the iPhone 12's camera is awesome, but it could be even better with accessories from Moment. The anamorphic lens helps transform your iPhone 12 footage into a Hollywood cinematic movie. Paired with their Moment Pro camera app, you can get the pro controls of a big camera 
straight on your iPhone. Moment also sells some of the must have accessories to go with your new iPhone. Everything from stylish phone cases to keep your phone safe, power accessories to help keep your phones charged up while shooting, gimbals to help you get buttery smooth footage and much, much more. That's right, not only does Moment make amazing cases, and add-on lenses for your iPhone 12 and other smartphones, but they're a one-stop shop where you can find all the best gear as well. Check out the Moment Shop by clicking on the link down in the description below to see all the best accessories for the iPhone 12 or even your existing smartphone that you already use. Once again, big thank you to Moment for sponsoring this video. Okay, back to the photos. Here are some images I took at night in downtown Seattle. One thing that sticks out to me on these is that both of these just do a great job in low light, but I appreciate the iPhone's wider main camera and the fact that the iPhone 12 Pro has a dedicated telephoto camera for night mode portraits. The LiDAR scanner that a lot of people are kind of writing off as just being there for augmented reality does a really good job at instantly finding focus in these scenarios. The new optical image stabilization makes 5,000 adjustments per second compared to the 1,000 per second on previous iPhone models, and the LiDAR scanner gives you up to six times faster autofocus in low light. Not to be outdone, one of the new modes on the Pixel 5 is a night sight portrait mode combo matching the night mode portrait combo of the iPhone 12 Pro. You can get some really nice shots with both, and again, all of these photos are unedited. Just raise the phone, point and shoot, or tap to focus, then point and shoot. Now it should be said that the Pixel required much more tap to focus for night shots than the iPhone did, which I assume is due to the LiDAR scanner, but that's just a guess. One other point I wanted to make, as we can see here, both phones take great photos, but the one area that I wish the Pixel did better in is showing you in advance what your photo is gonna look like. On the iPhone viewfinder, when taking a photo, you can see in real time something very close to what your image will end up looking like. On the Pixel, a lot of times when I snapped the photo, I was disappointed until I tapped on the photo and gave it a few seconds to process, and then it showed me the final result, which looked way better than what I saw in the viewfinder when I took the photo. Okay, what this test showed me is a couple of things. First, Google's computational photography still produces impressive results, but the leap from the Pixel 4 to the Pixel 5 seems to be the smallest yet for the Pixel lineup. The Pixel 5 is a nice phone, but I don't know that you're gonna see major improvement in still photography when compared to the Pixel 4, unless ultra wide photos are your thing, but then you're losing the portrait camera to get that. On the other hand, this also shows just how large a leap Apple made this year with its cameras. They stepped up their game in the computational photography area and also brought better actual hardware to the standard wide sensor and the ability to bring in more light, which can then be processed by the smart HDR3 night mode and deep fusion algorithms, which all ends up bringing us what I think is the best overall smartphone camera on the market when you take into account picture quality, speed of shooting, and the absolutely incredible video experience which no other smartphone can touch this year. Again, I have a separate video coming that's all about iPhone 12 Dolby Vision, so be sure to subscribe if you wanna see that one. Any questions on the iPhone 12 Pro or Pixel 5 as it pertains to the cameras or anything else for that matter, drop them down in the comments below and I'll meet you there for further discussion. We'll also have way more on the iPhone 12 coming up on Geared Up. Geared Up is the weekly podcast I do each week with John Rettinger where we do deep dives on the latest tech, gadgets, and games. Just search for Geared Up in your favorite podcast player if you wanna listen. Thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, I appreciate your support. I'm Andrew Edwards, and I will catch you in the next video.